Hi, in this video, we will look at a couple important features of the projectile motion. Because mathematically working out the details of the projectile motion requires at least the trigonometry level math, we are not going to do that. But there are some details we can look at without doing all that much math. This is especially possible thanks to FET, PHET simulation available from University of Colorado. We will use the projectile motion simulation. First, let's use the intro tab to illustrate one important principle of projectile motion, independence of horizontal and vertical motion. You can see that if we launch our projectile with an initial speed of 0 m per second, the projectile just uh, drops straight down. <laughs> I want you to pay attention to these dots, which indicate where the projectile was at a given time. The big dot marks the 1 second mark. If we launch the projectile with an initial speed of 5 m per second, then this is what you see. And if we launch the projectile with initial speed of 10 meters per second, it lands farther. And if we launch at speed of 15 meters per second, it lands even farther. This part is fairly intuitive. Now, this is the part where I want you to pause for a bit and think about this question before I give you the answer. As we increase the initial launch velocity, how do you think that affected the landing time of the balls? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippis. All right. Depending on your thinking process, you might have thought the time would have taken shorter because of faster speed, or maybe you thought the time would have taken longer maybe thinking like a glider. What surprises many students at first is that all these four projectiles landed at the same time. You can see with these dots, at one second mark, they all dropped about halfway down of the initial height of 10 meters. And it took another 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 to 0.5 seconds to drop to the ground. Whatever horizontal motion they were undergoing was not relevant to the vertical component of the motion, and this is because the vertical motion is independent of the horizontal motion. Your essay assignment will address some aspect of this, and you will have videos of real experiments, not simulation, to watch. Now, let's look at projectile motion for an object launched along a level ground. I think some aspects of this come intuitively to many students. For example, fixing the initial speed at 15 meters per second. If I asked you at what angle would you have to launch the projectile for maximum distance it will travel, many would say 45 degrees. Oh, let me disable air resistance. And you're right. Now, let me try at a little less angle. And a little more. To see that the range is indeed maximized at 45 degrees. The 45 degree landing spot was slightly further than 40 or 50 degree landing spot. Now, here are some fun facts I can demonstrate. At any range you can reach with an angle other than 45 degrees, you can find two angles to reach that range with. See how far the projectile lands when I fire at 25 degrees. And if I fire the projectile at 65 degrees, it lands on the same spot, but it does spend a little more time in the air. All right, this has been a fun simulation. Before I say goodbye, I can show one more thing, which is actually in your textbook. 
that is the analysis of the horizontal and vertical components of the motion. If I turn on these velocity vectors um, components, you can see how the vertical component changes, like that of a projectile thrown directly upward, and how the horizontal component doesn't change. And you can confirm this by looking at the acceleration vector it points it directly downward with no horizontal component. Please feel free to find the simulation on the FAT website and play with it on your own. Projectile motion is a very common physical phenomenon in everyday experience, and a good intuition for it is as practical as anything else you would learn in introductory physics. Bye.